everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. It is Wednesday night, it is pretty cold and uh, we hope that you've somehow managed to stay warm out there. Of course, uh, my uh, panel this evening is, is uh, shifted a little bit and uh, once again we welcome back some of our popular faces. Morgan Newman, how are you my man? How's it chaps, how are you doing? You carried the candle a bit this weekend, huh? I did, I did. I tried my best at least and yeah, it didn't go too badly I don't think. And another member of the Cape Rugby TV panel who we've been struggling to get him back since he's uh, made his move into the upper echelons of the up market smarter coaches. Ishmael Dolly, how are you? <laughs> Fine, thanks JP, thanks for that intro. <laughs> Did I sort of get it right there? No, I mean... Nah. No. No. Okay. Can you give us an enlightenment quickly? No, nah, well, uh, just enjoying the coaching at the moment and... Um, Obviously got recognized by the union, so... Uh, oh, we're going we're gonna gonna to get into that in, the, in a second. Yeah, yeah. You know, Mr. H. Ons Vietmos here, I don't know, he's not... Well, yeah, well uh, you know, the union looks at how you perform. Yeah. And top of the log. So, that's where he's... So, why sorry, he's just there. run that by me again. The union looks at how you perform, yeah. and then you get appointed. Yeah, so he's... Does she want to debate that matter? Because <laughs> I'm sure there's, <laughs> a few, the <laughs> there's a few family members that, will <laughs> that might argue the point. In fact, there's a few members of the community that will say, finally, Ishmael Dolly has been uh, recognized. But yeah, let, let's touch on that, Ish. Um, you've now been appointed to <coughs> coach the, the amateur squad. No, it's actually the Western Province Dizer team. The Dizer yeah. squad. So, uh, in fact, you did correct me yeah. before the show. Yeah. So it's the Dizers. You're excited? Yes. Very excited. Um, we're starting our preparations next week already, so yeah. all, the, all the clubs have been notified about um, certain players that need to be attending certain trials. And um, I'm looking forward to it. And um, there's a lot of talent out there, and hopefully we can recognize that talent and give them opportunities, because that's what it's all about. All right, folks, it was another interesting weekend of rugby, and there were some requests from uh, the fans out there to, to post uh, more Super League A uh, results. Well, we could only post a limited amount of Super League A results um, due to the fact that the Varsities are on holiday and uh, Hamilton's had a double bye and I think Bella Hart at the same time had a bye. So let's take a quick look at the, the, the results that did come in on uh, the uh, Super League A log. There you see Tigerberg, 27-25 on the Belleville. SK Warmers, what was the loss for them against Durbel, 26-18. In Super League, Brackenfell, uh, Cales River, win for them. Primrose uh, against Goodwood, 71 points to 9. And Falls Bay, 58-7 over Hands and Hearts. If we look at those results there, Tigerberg, Belleville, the stage we just stopped there, that's a bit of a derby match, huh? Yeah, I know. And well, we said, you know, it's always difficult, you know, to take on Tigerberg at Florida Park. Yeah. So, uh, Belleville just couldn't make it. I, I, I'm surprised at actually at the closeness of the of the the score, the result, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I suppose, you know, in games like that, where they all know one another, some of the guys that played for Belvo played for Tigerberg, and vice versa. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's always tough. SK Warmers took on Del uh, Durbel over the weekend, 26-18. Those are the two community cups, uh, community cup teams. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose they sort of wanted to really test each other after the community <laughs> cup playing club rugby to see, okay, <coughs> Where do we stand? But uh, not a bad result for for Esco Warmers, 18-26. Um, what do you make of that? Well, I, you know, I always uh, think that Esco Warmers have the idea that they, when they play at home, you know, they they shouldn't lose. Well, yeah, I would imagine that's they a good have idea. A big <laughs> crowd and you know and support and all that. So it's strange to me that they, they actually lost by. A, Fairly big margin. Yes, what do you make of that result? Uh, Durbel 26-18. Durbel's a strong side, but I mean, 18 points is for, for SK Warmers. Well, with, with the weather that we had, yeah. um, obviously the pitch conditions was also suited Durbel with the forward play. Mm. Um, it was quite muddy. And obviously, SK plays a lot with their backs and, 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 and their loose forwards, so it negated their the game plan a little bit. But um, not a bad result. I'm sure they'll bounce back next week. It's the kind of game we spoke about this last week. It's the kind of game that you you want to keep it up front. You like to keep it tight, you know, and sort of play in the right areas on the field, and not sort of throw 50-50 passes in your own 22 on your try line. But um, I'm sure uh, the boys from Bull Cup will, will bounce back next week. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, Super League B, Kelsey 42-3 over Brackenfell, Primrose 71-9 over um, over Goodwood. Uh, Goodwood has been coming right a little bit more. So they've been doing a little bit better. <coughs> they won a couple of games finally. 
And uh, now, again, Primrose. Primrose is dominating. They're the top of the, top of the log at the moment. I mean, UWC dropped down because of the fact that they didn't, didn't have a game, um, assuming that they would have won that game. But um, Primrose, again, showing how strong they are. And, and it must be sad for the Goodwood boys to, to be back in the situation. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously they took a, they took a massive 100 early in, the, early in the season. And then they started to get things right nicely. And, you know, it started to see that it started to look like the wheel was turning in the right direction. And now they take a result like this against Primrose. I mean, look, Primrose are top of the log and they are sort of, you know, sort of head and shoulders above a few of the other teams in the, in the league. But, I mean, yeah, Goodwood wouldn't be happy with that result. And I think they're going to have to either regroup very quickly before the break in order to, you know, get the things in the right direction again. And it was the same for False Bay coming out. Uh, they, I think they had one or two buys. Hmm. Uh, once again, just showing how strong they are. False Bay, UWC, Primrose, definitely top of the file there in the States in Super League B. Yeah, I know that. Those three are the trendsetters. I said, I think it was last week or the week before, I said, False Bay is quite hanging in there. They're two yeah. games behind, you know, and uh, I think they and Primrose are playing one another next weekend or next Wednesday. Yeah, because of course one of those matches was was called off yeah. um, because of the weather. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, let's move on to Premier League B now. Uh, Macassar against Scottsdale, 18-17 win for them. St George's uh, going down to LCC, 19-16, and Rangers, 24-20 win for them um, against Carfontein. So uh, yeah, not not too much that can be El said there. Um, LCC River actually won a game. Well, is, yes, Elsie's River, congratulations, <laughs> yeah, St. George's. Um, and St. George's is not a, not a weak side, yeah, you know, we watched yeah. them against the Lorient. And uh, okay, so yes, it was terrible conditions, raining yeah. like we've never seen cats and dogs out there. But uh, a good result for Elsie. Yeah, I would think they would be quite happy with that one. Yeah, yeah, St. George's, I think, will be a little bit crock. Of course, <laughs> coaching at St. George's wouldn't be too yeah. happy with that yeah, result. No. Uh, a couple of things just going a little bit against St. George's at the moment. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm sure they'll bounce back as well. In Premier League B, there's some interesting results as well. Funestel, 25-34 uh, uh, loss for them. Langa, oh, uh, another win for them. 31-26 uh, over Silver Tree. Esther, if you're going down the Strand United. And Young Peoples against Momentum. Strong win there for Momentum. Mm. 41 points, 19. Mm. Ish, we might as well talk to you about it, seeing as <coughs> you are the coach of Momentum. Um, you know, I mean, we know that you're used to coaching at a much higher level than, than uh, at, at club rugby. You know, so... If you can come down a little bit for us back to Glasgow. <laughs> 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 you know, it's not often that we have a person of your stature in our midst. <laughs> good result for you guys, 41-19. No, it was very good. Um, after our first defeat against him in the first round, um, it was important for our boys to bounce back. And I think the boys knew that uh, this game meant yeah. a lot, not only for the league, but um, going forward. And, but there's still lots of rugby to be played. Um, young people's played a very, very attractive brand of rugby. We always knew that they, uh, they'll come at us non-stop because that's the way they play. I said that they've got a style similar to the Cheetahs. They, they just don't give up and they run at all angles and they're very fit side. So we had to prepare our guys for, what's to, for, for that. And um, obviously our game plan was to play in their half and let them run out of their own half and get our good defensive lines so that they cannot count us. Sounds like you've quite, got quite a bit of respect for young people's. They are top side. Um, they are very top side. And I mean, they've played in Premier A and Super B. So they come with a, with a good pedigree. And um, we had to have respect for them. Um, yeah. It's important for us that we had to just execute our game plan well and just learn from our past mistakes when we played them. And from a moment of point of as uh, aspect now, you were talking about your players who um, seem to understand where, they, where they're at. It's not just the coach telling you to rock up on the day and play yeah. rugby. You seem to have like a, an understanding amongst the players and the players themselves. Normally it takes a couple of games into the season for the players to settle into it. The coach gets it first, and then the, you say the, play, the players have got that mentality of they understand where they're at. Well, it's, it's still a process. I mean, it's taken me now over a year and a half to drive the vision and, 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 and the, the goals of the, of the club. And the, the players are starting to realize that um, with the whole new structure of the Western Province and the leagues and stuff like that, that there's a massive opportunity for this club in particular to go up and skip a league. And um, they realize that uh, they've got to put in everything and you've got to get the buy-in from them as players. But firstly, the coaches have got to give the vision and the goals to the rest of the club and you've got to get the buy-in with a good leadership, yeah. uh, with a good captain. And I think that has helped a lot. So um, I think you've got Eddie Teron captain yeah. in there. Um, he's, a, he's a superb leader. Um, he commands a lot of respect from the players. Yeah. And um, his actions and his, his play obviously speaks volumes on the field of play, and uh, guys look up to that. You're talking, though, about a vision, which is a long-term plan. Do the players feel like they're committed 
for longer than just a season? Well, I'm hope, I hope so. Um, especially in this day and age, um, players get targeted from various different clubs, um, whether at Western Province Trials or whether you're playing a, a club game. And um, it's important that you keep a core group of players. And um, it's very difficult because there's so many things flying around in terms of, um, how can I say, um, Incentive. incentives, you know, <laughs> for players and, 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 yeah, and, and, and opportunities. So we've got to make it as interesting as possible for how the players. How much, um, how much of a difference has it had to, to have Amy Jacobs at your side? Absolutely massive. Um, he brings obviously a big amount of respect to him because he's a springbok. And um, with his knowledge of the game and, and, and the drills and the, the, the structure he brings as well, it helps a lot in terms of players can implement and use stuff that he used maybe at international level. Do you think, do you think that there's a certain element of amongst the players of of pride for playing for Moriton, that it's not about the money, but I'm able to actually play rugby with a former Springbok, a former uh, national player like yourself? Most definitely, I think um, they have that sort of respect and I'm sure that they've learned quite a bit, I hope. Yeah. And we keep on learning every day. I mean, I learn every day from them and um, we never stop learning. I mean, there's a saying in, in, our, in the Muslim culture, you learn from the cradle to the grave. Yeah. And um, that's, my, that's my, my, my vision, my philosophy. I keep on learning every single day and I hope that the players, they learn it as well. All right. Morgan Newman, you can uh, focus on that as well. But, uh, <laughs> can I wipe my tears? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but I think at the moment, you're a little bit more focused on the cradle than the grave. <laughs> yeah, that is a big problem of mine, James, you, I must be you, honest. You, you've recently become an cool. uncle. Yes, I have become an uncle. Little Riley Jessica has been born. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'm uh, must say, Ish and I have something more than just rugby in common <laughs> now. <I think. laughs> All right. Anyway. Yeah, well, congratulations, my man. I think she's she's uh, going to have a, a great uncle there. Lots of big rugby players looking after her. Yeah, thanks, James. I've already wanted to feel the boys to have her back, so she'll be well looked after, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how their backs are going to be in 21 years' time, though. But <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. Huh? Yeah, anyway, let's look at the results now in Division 1. Violets was um, up against Wraith. There was a good win there for Violets. Laguna, 21-21 loss against Hamadiers. Of course, Hamadiers pulled off a victory there against Violets last week. Silverleaf. Uh, beating Rockland 16-12 and Stellenbosch Coronation uh, beating Northern. So congratulations there to Stelco. But of course, the match of the week, Morgs, you were out there. It was um, Silverleaf and Rocklands out at Elsie Shafi in uh, 47th Street. I was unfortunately, well not unfortunately, fortunately, in fact, I was up in Joburg. Um, it could have been an unfortunate, but I was there for, for, for valid sporting reasons, for the, for the better of the nation, so to speak. Um, so very the Rocklands, how did the game go? Yeah, it was awesome, man, Jeffs. I mean, I must say, there was a decent turnout. Mr. H and I rocked up there, and yeah, I mean, I must say, the, the quality of rugby was very good. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it, was, it must have been 3 0 or 3 0 for the first 50 minutes of the game. So it was two and fro. You could see the teams was a sort of proper boxing match in the beginning. And in the last 10 minutes, they really uh, spoiled really the a crowd. Boxing match, you don't mean like as in violence. No, 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 just a proper sort of, uh, you know, boxing match where, where you sort of sparring session where, yeah, yeah. you know, they're feeling each other out. And for 50 minutes, the teams really went sort of, you know, hammer and tongs, sort of in the middle of the f midfield, sort of just going flat out, you know. And then in the last 10 minutes, like I said, things just opened up and they scored, I mean, uh, Silverleaf scored two tries and Rockland scored one. Yeah. Um, well, we managed to get some of the highlights there of the game between um, Silverleaf and Rocklands. And uh, what a game it uh, obviously was. Uh, I wasn't there, but I was watching you on the back channel on Twitter and watching what everybody had to say about it. It was a fantastic time. Uh, I'll tell you more about that in a second. But let's, let's catch the highlights. Silverleaf against Rocklands. Thank <laughs> you. 
gut. So Soul Belief against Rocklands and was home ground win then for um, uh, Soul Belief. Uh, Morgs, it does look like, uh, again, a lot of fans, a lot of players, a little bit of running rugby. Great stuff. Yeah, I mean, look, conditions, uh, it was very windy down there. So conditions were obviously difficult to sort of run the ball initially. But it's amazing how the sort of the team adapted, both teams adapted, and by the end of the game really played some attractive rugby. So, so and just tell us a little bit more about the fans arriving on the day, because I think, you know, one of the things that, that we constantly have to look at is sport is actually about the fans. We can play the rugby, but without the fans, there won't be any games. Uh, how, how was it on the day? No, James, I mean, really lots of people came out there. It was a good mixture of male and female, and you know, everyone came out there. And I saw quite a few people actually with a drifter watching the Springbok game and watching the, uh, really? watching the, <laughs> watching the, watching the, watching the, the club side. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it was nice to see all the, you know, the guys engaging with the fans and, you know, the really the home side again. Silverleaf towards the end, you could see the fans started getting behind them, and, and I think it sort of carried them over the line in the end. And you mentioned earlier on that it was that there was a bit of a boxing match, but of course you were referring to the fact that it was a tight game. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, look. I mean, it's an old cliche of you know that sparring session where sort of yeah. you're feeling each other out. So yeah. the first twenty in, in general, it's usually the first twenty minutes where teams, you know, you sort of you'll probe here and you'll probe here, and then you'll see. I mean, Ish will be able to tell us a little bit more, but you sort of, as a, as a, as a team, you'll probe at certain places and realize, okay, cool, they're weakened maybe up front today, or maybe the backs have the upper hand, and then in the second half, you try and sort of implement what, what the coach tells you at halftime in terms of where you find their weaknesses of the day. Well, we did catch up uh, with the losing captain and coach of um, Rocklands. Let's hear what the boys had to say. It was a very tough battle, and I'm standing now with the losing coach of Rocklands, Sol and Sol, not very happy with the result. Yeah, the day was a bit disappointed for us. Uh, the, the game was very close, but we were still further with one point, but it's too far. Uh. And what, what, do you, what do you think is your, your weak points um, that, that lost to the game today? Uh, yeah, I have to credit to Salva Leaf. They played well. In the first half, they had definitely played for the point of us. They had us played there. But we were back in the second half, but I think... Um, Alle toch goede skopper in die in die span en ik denk dat is de game dat is dat is de game verloren. And you're looking forward to the rest of the season? Ja, was is positief. Was was gaan niet alleen hè? Ze we was gaan terugkomen en we graag in de eerste vijf en einde. Ja, was ik gewend dat dat weer is. Alle toch was aan de andere kant bij de ijsok gewend. Maar ik weet niet of ik net aan die gang kan komen met die basisse dingen niet en met die gameplay niet. Wat ik positief. Als nog acht wedstrijden hoor. Wat ik, uh, wat ik gewoon ons kan overwinnen om het liefst in de top 5 uit te komen. Ons is onder die lok, wat mijn team is positief. Ons is een goede team en ons gaat hier opgeven. Zo, so, regardless of the scenario there, win or lose, still very positive. Morgs, uh, Erwin Adonis, the, the um, captain there, um, and uh, Selwyn Titus, uh, they seem to be chin up, regardless of the, the, the odd niggle here and there. Yeah, no, look, I mean, they were definitely uh, very positive after the game. I mean, they still see that, you know, I mean, a lot of teams realize that there's still eight or nine games left of the season. So we're only really 50% 50, 50 way through of the season. So, so lots of time to, yeah, so <laughs> lots of time to come to make corrections and, and get results and, and find mm. yourself sort of higher in the log than, than you currently stand. Um, would you agree with that, Ish? Yeah, well, this, we've only played two games in the second round. So, I mean, yeah. there's still lots of game left. Um, we've got, obviously, the break coming up now soon. So... It will be very interesting to see how the clubs adapt after that break. You're talking about Ramadan? Now? Yes, that's yeah, correct. Yeah. Do, you know, do we know the date yet from wh wh when the fast will start? It starts the 10th of July. Okay. 9th or 10th. Um, and then obviously it's a month. So then it's a month after that. Yeah. So there will still be a, a, a bit of a break and then we'll, well, we'll have a couple of uh, shifts in the log again. And once again, we'll be able to then see which clubs move up and down on a strike <laughs> rate. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Remember, uh, every week we have a different coach who's maybe at the top and one who shifts up and down. It's all about the strike rate. Okay, so those of you that perhaps watched the show last week and
got the idea that I was announcing that that specific coach on that specific day was the best coach on the planet. No, it's about the current strike rate. All right, in other words, how many games have you won and how many games have you lost? And we can debate that this year as well. But this week we'll take a look and maybe the rankings have changed slightly. Okay, we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the show, but it's become a hot topic. People are loving the fact that they can look at the scenario of strike rates. In other words, your individual performance based on the amount of games that you've played and the amount of games that you've won, which I think has become a fantastic, interesting statistic for the coaches out there. But let's speak to the winning captain and coach of Rocklands now. Alright folks, I'm standing here with a very happy Percy De Mornay of Silverleaf. Percy, happy with the result? Very happy. It will take a long time for us now to get the result like this. You guys lost uh, last week and uh, you obviously turned it around this week. You very happy? Yeah, I told the guys, it's the way you stay and uh, get up. It's not the way you, uh, the way you get, uh, take it out. If you take it out, you can't get up again. And what facet of the game do you think won it for you today? I think our bigs played very well today. Our forwards was a bit disappointing. Because from the from last last week's game, uh, they dropped their, their level and that's the way they keep Rocklands in the game today. And you're looking forward to the rest of the season? Yeah, definitely. Yes, that we have, we've got the goal. We drop a, a couple of points, but we're still there in the in the running for the league. So that's our aim for the season. And I'm standing here now with a very happy Ashley Best. Ashley, happy with the result? Thank you very much. When it was a hard game, it's always hard against Rocklands. I see you've got a blue eye there, a tough battle today? Very tough, my friend. <laughs> uh, you guys lost last week. Um, what was the remedy for this week? Oh, we had to pick it up from Nick last week. It was 26-25, uh, as you can see, it was very close. So we had to give it more this week. And what you're, what you're looking forward to the rest of the season? Uh, we would love to win the league. Uh, so far, we've been falling out the past three matches. We lost, so now we're back on track again. Back on track again, <laughs> there you go. Um, they seem to be is reasonably satisfied with their performance. Ashley Bess and Percy De Mornay, the winning captain and coach there of Silverleaf. So well done to them. Of course, we had a Tata man of the match, courtesy of Arvin Lindner and the boys at Tata Osterberg and Tata Fall Valley, uh, who kindly donated once again a thousand rand to supporting a community sport and uh, helping us eradicate the evils, so to speak. And let's catch up there with the Tata man of the match. It was Grant. Van der Kolf. Back with you in a sec. I'm now standing with the man, the man of the match, the Tata man of the match, uh, Grant Van der Kolf. Grant, very happy with the win? Uh, thank you very much. Um, it was hard, but um, we kept through. And I see you dictated with, the, with your hands and with the boot today. Yeah, I'm just a uh, school dummy through there. <laughs> 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 Tell me, what, what do you do during the week to practice the kicking and the, and the skills? Well, we train very hard during the week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, uh, um, but we, we keep well. I'm now going to ask um, Jerome De Mornay, the chairman of uh, Silverleaf, to hand over the check for you. Just hand over the check there, shake hands. <laughs> Jerome, Jerome, tell me, you're very happy with uh, Grant's performance? Oh, I worked hard on him during the week. I'm the fitness coach here, and I do very hard work with him. And there's no play play uh, when we work on the Tuesday and the Thursday we work. And I can say he deserve it, really deserve it. And I'm actually happy for him because he stood with the injury also, and he played through that. So, well done, Grant, again. All right, folks, that's it from us here in Silverleaf in Elsie's River at 47th Street. Congratulations again, once again, to Grant van der Kolf, our Tata Man of the Match. Grant van der Kolf, the Tata Man of the Match, he seemed to be uh, happy with the check there, Moves. Yeah, I must say he was happy. I think uh, his teammates and everyone else was just as happy. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. H kept a close eye on the man of the match check this week. So, so yeah, the crowd was, they loved, they loved his vibe in the man of the match. And the fans were clearly enjoying it. Yeah, no, I mean, look, he was, uh, he was an absolute hero for the night. So I'm sure he, he almost got picked up and carried away after, the, after <laughs> being announced man of the match. Did you say to Eddie Owens, we had a handful of the check? No, 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 we kept, you know, I kept it on, you know, underneath. I kept it close yeah. in my hand. Yeah. But the, the thing is, about that whole community there. We, we, we spoke about it at the Lotus Park. And yeah. there. There's about a hundred players that come there every week. Yeah. There's nothing on that field. 
There's no city. There's no cover. There's nothing there. But they are there. They come to enjoy their rugby. And with them, the families, and the Mornay family is big there. I mean, they, they started yeah. the club there. And Mrs. De Mornay, she's 76 years old, running up and down the field, you know, yeah. shouting and cheering the team on. And the girls that work in the tuck shop, they the Mornays. Yeah. The girl that work at the gate, she's at the Mornay. So the whole family is involved there. And we often speak about that. You know, we often speak about how at every club there's a handful of individuals who absolutely are the, 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 the lifeblood of the club and keep, keep I mean, yes, you've got a couple of people, uh, you've played at a, a number of clubs, I mean, you've, you've <coughs> a few names come to, to the, I mean, we've actually asked folks, folks on Facebook to mention their community leaders, and we've had a number of posts, and, and folks, we will be sharing some of those names with you. Um, in fact, one of the coaches we are hoping to, to bring on the show quite soon is Armin Arifdin from, from Collegians, who, who we've been told is is, is followed in the footsteps of his father, and he himself was a player at Collegians, and is, so there's a whole lot of family history there that that that, that helps supporting the club. I mean, you, you've come across many community leaders like that. Yeah, um, and that's what what makes this sport and this this game so special. Um, if it wasn't for those leaders, I mean, uh, the club and the and the community would would not only support the teams as well, but it would it would break up a bit. And you mentioned the Arif teams at uh, Collegians. They played a major role, uh, yeah. Buha Arif Din. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's a legend uh, in Mitchell's Plain. Um, at SK, uh, Khamim Khan, um, also another legend uh, at, in the community. And, and these are, no, Lean Oosthuizen at Milnerton. Yeah. I mean, they've all and played. And Mrs. Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dolly, she, she puts it out. I mean, she, you know what I mean? She's making some samosas and everything like that. It's all for you, Jake. I have, you could have brought someone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, let's see. And then, yes. it was called Leah Auntie. So when, I, when I heard that he was, that's why yeah. actually also, I, you know, I rushed to be here. Uh, I even dressed up for the occasion. Yeah, yeah. you can you see know? how I look for more <laughs> <songs. laughs> But your dad is also at the game every weekend, and there's other people, Nolene and, and Moritz, and yeah. a bunch of guys like that. There. Yeah, and those are the guys that actually make the club tick. Yeah. And um, there are certain, play, certain people like that at every single club. And it's important that the players and the executive they acknowledge those people and um, you know support them w yeah. w through through thick and thin because those are the guys that that bring the jerseys that bring the water bottles that you know all the small things the little you know, things. It's interesting that you mention that because uh, uh, I'm involved with the Western Province Sports Council and last year we had the Western every year there's the Western Province Sports uh, Awards um, for athletes and one of the uh, one of the awards that they give out is the Volunteer of the Year award, which is. That's what no, it's all about. No. Is without the volunteers, it just doesn't work. Yeah, and um, we all look at the, you know, the, the the big prizes. You know, the guys that score the tries and the guys that are playing first team. Yeah. What about the guys that are playing third team, second team? Yeah. The guys that are working behind the scenes, you know, and making the things at the club work. Yeah. And um, that's what makes this game so special. That we incorporate every single one in in this game, and, and they need to be acknowledged. There's nothing better than having a, 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 um, a first team game play. And the second team and the third team have stayed behind yeah. to watch. And that's, the that's, age. That, that's how it should be. You know, you know? I mean, it's, great for, it's great for them. A lot of people get in the car straight away after yeah. they've played. But yeah. Yeah. those guys who wait to watch the, the first team play to support them. But I think yeah, if, even there, you know, after the, the match, the, the two teams, both clubs, they were together singing. Oh, it was nice. It was a nice atmosphere. Yeah. And uh, very interesting phenomenon is that the chairman of the of, of Silver League is actually the qualified first leader on the day there. Really? Yes, he was running mm -hmm. up and down. He wasn't worried and about all the other things. He just looked after the first day. And we, we would have heard there also that uh, Morgan, when he was doing the, the Man of the Match interview there, uh, when he gave away the, the, the Man of the Match um, to, to Grant van der Kolf there, was that when he handed over the check, he said he's also the conditioning coach. <laughs> yeah. So he's the first aider. And he's also in the morning. <laughs> 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 All right, okay. One of these days I'm going to get out of the game and hopefully Rebecca the morning will be there. All right, we're going to take an ad break and when we come back, we'll of course take a look at what's happening in the rest of the division, starting off with Division 2. We'll be back with you in a sec. So yes, we need to look at the results now in Division 2. So welcome back. Of course, Cape Rugby TV with you Wednesday nights live at 9. Um, sometimes we do the odd pre-record. 
www.facebook.com forward slash TV. That's where you can find us. A monster following now on Facebook and the posts and the content that we're getting from, from you out there has been absolutely fantastic. Let's take a look now at the results in Division 2. And there are Blue Stars, a good uh, win for Masipupulele once again, 19-10. Kyla Moore, 30-21, at least uh, a win for Kyla Moore. Young Gardens, or at least Young Wesleys, losing to Caledonian Roses. One in Division 3. Imikawi, 44-14 over Perseverance. Temperance losing to Young Ideas. Retreat beating Richmond Rangers. Uh, Strand Pioneers going down to Peninsula. Tariq Van Ross won't be happy with that result. No, sorry, Strand Pioneers beating Peninsula. Tariq Van Ross will be very happy with that result. And in the Paul region, a massive win there for Lower Paul, 93 over Peril United. Vineyards, 47-5 over Simondium. Riverstones, 15-7 over Albion's Young Gardens. Uh, losing to Young Standards, 22-20. And Allendale, 26-16 over the Paul Rangers side. While in the Farm League in the Simmonsburg region, the Pumids, 43-0 over Lawangle. La Motte, 43-0 over Languedoc. Blue Stars going down to Excelsior's at Fora, 47-7 over Blue Swallows. Right, if I have my rankings right there, in the Farm League, Fora and Pumids are uh, top of the pile there. So, uh, Fora, Pumids and La Motte playing some very good rugby there. A little bit later in the show, as I said, we will be taking a look at those rankings. But Mr. H, if we go back to this Paul region scenario, 90 points to 3 for Farrell United, or at least a win for, for lower Paul. Farrell United, I mean, they just hang in there, they keep staying. Is it, do, I, haven't, I haven't even met these guys. They, they're just happy to keep playing? Yeah, well, the fact that they turn up every Saturday despite all those big scores. I think the second and third teams, you know, they don't get such big scores. But, uh, yeah, you know, you're there to play rugby. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're playing against good opposition, <laughs> you know, good guys. So, so it's my game, my game, uh, sort of land where it lands. Yeah. Yeah, okay, for all the United, well, credits to you for the rocking up game after game. And, and, and we, we all, well, that's what we need. We want to see you keep playing rugby. Right, folks, we did run the spot the ball competition last week. It was a photograph supplied to us kindly by Anselin Napro. Um, was Anselin Napro Mills? Yes, Anzana Pro posted it on the Facebook page and we stole it to do our um, spot the ball competition, James. Well, I did he, he, I'm sure he didn't post it on the Facebook page before the competition. Uh, he must have uh, said it out uh, to us in private. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so we had it private, so no one had a chance to see that picture, thank heavens. But uh, you did have an opportunity to win for yourself a Cab Rugby TV t-shirt, right? There you have it. That's the back of a Cab Rugby TV t-shirt as you, as you can see it right there right now. And uh, we are again going to run the Spot the Ball competition. That's going to come up in a couple of seconds. Now, last week's Spot the Ball competition, let's have a look at the first picture. And there you see you would have had grid number A1, 2, and 3, B1, 2, at least B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, and C3. Right, folks, there you have a chance to look at it. Can you guess which grid it is in? Um, Ish, would you like to hazard a guess? <laughs> so let's just have another look at that picture. A2. A2, you go for A2, Mr. H. I would say A2. Okay. You go for A2 as well? Uh, well, Morgs, I'm not going to ask you because <laughs> you obviously. Yeah, I've, uh, uh, I've, 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 seen, I've seen this, Jeff, so I'm not, I'm not part of. <laughs> I won't be part of the competition for this week, but I think next week I'm, I'm definitely part of it because right. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, folks, so what we're going to do now <laughs> is we're going to show you the picture and then immediately we're going to overlay the original picture for you and you can see where it is. Let's have a look at the original. The first one again now, there you see it, A1, A2, A3. These are your options. <laughs> and now here you see the ball arrive. There you go. The winner <laughs> would have been in B2. Uh, Mr. H, -ish, uh, you, yeah. uh, you <laughs> it's funny, okay. Uh, so, well, Morgs, uh, we've got a couple of hundred entries in on that one. Yeah, uh, yeah we've got over 150 entries in that one. And, uh, yeah, we, we've got the winner. I think it's uh, if you go back to the picture, you'll see it there. Yeah, so congratulations there to Theo Williams. Theo wins for himself a Cape Rugby TV T-shirt. Theo, this is yours up for grabs, all right? Cape Rugby T-shirt. Uh, you can grab that from the Cape Rugby crew. And, uh, right, let's take a look now at our next spot the ball competition. Once again, A1, A2, A3. And uh, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, and C3. Where in the world is the ball? So you've got to look very carefully because um, you can see the photograph of a player kicking there. I'm going to hand the, the, uh, the options over to Mr. Dolly and to Mr. Abram. So there's the player kicking the ball. This is a very tough one. Can you tell us which grid the ball is in? A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, or C3. 
So there's a player kicking for poles. Just tell us where the ball is. All right, this one you are really going to struggle <laughs> with. We made life extremely difficult for you. You will find the picture on Facebook as of the, the minute after the show. All right, and then you just need to tell us which one it's in and you can win for yourself a Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. So it's time for us to now look at the logs within Western Province Club Rugby. Who's gone up, who's gone down. And uh, well, of course, Super League A is a little bit uh, stagnant at the moment due to the fact that the university is away, but nevertheless, let's take a look at the logs. Durbel are still firmly on top there with Marty's UCT and SK Warmers in fourth place. In Super League B, Primrose, UWC and False Bay are first, second and third. While in Premier League A, it's Salonians, Collegians and Cryfontein. In Premier League B, it's Milderton at the top of the pile. Young Peoples and Strand United. Division 1, Violence, Silverleaf and Lagunia. And Division 2, Masipumalele continue to dominate all Saints, Caledonian Roses and Kyle Moore. Pioneers, Stone Pioneers, that is. Uh, they might be very happy. Imikawi, their uh, nemesis and young ideas, uh, a very tough side themselves in third place. While in Division 4, it's Kyle Leach, Bishop Labors and Young Brothers. Police have started to show their merit. They're in fourth place. Paul Rangers, Lower Paul Vineyards and uh, Young Gardens. At least that's in the Paul region. And Lamotte, Fora and Pumas. There you see our Farm League teams. They are uh, firmly in first, second and third in the Farm League. Right, it is time for us to take an ad break. And when we come back, we'll be taking a look at what's happening in the fixtures. We'll, of course, give you an opportunity uh, to win yourself an Evox competition prizes. So don't forget your cell phones handy we'll be back with you in a sec welcome back folks cape rugby tv it is wednesdays at nine now it is time for you to win for yourself an evox hamper before we take a look at the fixtures all you need to do is tell us who is the official sports nutrition supply the western promise rugby and the dhl stormers and once again the stormers favorite product up for grabs the synergy whey protein this sms the word uh, evox it's of course the official supplier to double three two eight oh and you win for yourself an Evox Synergy Whey Protein. This is what the Stormers are using. This is what many of the professional athletes around uh, South Africa are using to keep themselves in the mix. And if you want to win for yourself, this Evox hamper together with the uh, Shaker 600. And oh, let me just get it out here. A, a tray for the Evox water bottles that you win as well. Coming up, all right, that you can uh, give to your uh, team. You can see now a number of the teams running out with the Shaker trays, at least with the trays with the water bottles in. If you want to win this, double three two eight zero. There you see it on the screen right now. SMS your name and the answer to double three two eight zero. Remember the keyword is Evox. Congratulations to Louis de Tuy. Louis de Tuy wins for himself the Synergy Whey Protein. Is last week's winner. Congratulations, Louis. Your prizes will be uh, awarded to you shortly. Right, let's take a look now at the fixtures in uh, Western Rhymes Club Rugby coming up on the weekend. Hamilton's take on Tigerberg. Haldenberg are up against SK Warmers and Belleville are up against uh, Belhar. Hamlet's take on Goodwood. Solorians take on Peniel Villages. Macassar, Collegians, Rangers and Paul. Manneberg Rangers up against Lunga, Strand and Esterfield. Silverleaf and Franch Hook. Atlantis take on Stelcor. Busy Bees and Northerns. Hamadiers and Raithby. Violets and Lagunia. Blue Jets take on Young Wesleys and uh, that's at Kaya Young Stars, Kalmo, Masi Pumulele take on Watsonia. They're playing at Nurux. So it's a home game advantage for Masi Pumulele. Caledonian Roses, otherwise known in the favorite term of Kelly's, are up against Tech Gardens at Knoll Avenue. So home ground advantage for Caledonian Roses. While in Division 3, it's Perseverance, otherwise known as Proceeds, up against Temperance. Peninsula take on Young Ideas, Retreat and Whistling Wheels, Strand Pioneers, and Clutisville. Division 4 sees Young Brothers up against Progress. Bishop Labors take on Titans, Thistle, and Police. And uh, cities take on uh, Delft. In the Paul region, it's Allendale and Lower Paul, Vint Mill, United take on Simonium, Young Gardens and Vineyards, Young Standards take on Riverstone, Paul Rangers and, and Violets, Paul, Peril United and Albions. While in the Sinbornsburg region, there's only one game this weekend. It's Excelsior. They are up against Blue Swallows. Gentlemen, the game to go to. Uh, Mr. H, uh, it's a kind of a tough one. We need to start concentrating on uh, some of the other teams, maybe a little bit lower down the, uh, lower down the leagues. Uh, Perseverance and Temperance at City Park seems to be a good game. It's an opportunity to give them some exposure. Yeah, it's a derby game. Two derby game. Local clubs, and uh, I think both of them are struggling at the moment. Yeah. So uh, there should be a lot of needles in the game. <laughs> there should be a lot of needles <laughs> in the game. All right, so there it is, folks. We're going to Percy's 
uh, against Temperance. It's a home side. I think it's home ground for both teams. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's home ground advantage for both sides. So get down there this weekend. Perseverance up against Temperance, playing at City Park. What an amazing venue. <clears throat> right. Let's just have a touch on this uh, this uh, this matter of violence in club rugby. Uh, Mr. H, has it got better? Maybe I I would like to say yes. It is it is improved. Uh, I don't think there's the amount of red cards and, and you know, things. But what we have is that ever so now and again, spectators, you know, after the game or things like that, they suddenly start to do things that is unbecoming of rugby people. But it's a process. I mean, it, it's a process of awareness. It's a process of investment. It's a process of education. And that is what, what helps change things, Ish. Most definitely. Um, you know, you get these scuffles on the rugby field and, you know, the odd shoving here and the... Personally, I think they should sort that out on the field and themselves as players. When spectators get involved, yeah. it's a no-go. It's a no-go. It's a no-go. All right. The way that we fix it, though, is through, clearly, education, responsible administrators, Partnerships with partners who stay the distance to help the communities improve. I mean, we've seen it over the years. Generation upon generation have struggled. And the only way that generations, people come out of, I mean, clearly there's more violence in uh, uh, places where there is lack of, of facilities, lack of education, mm. and so on. And the only way you change people's lives is through a constant support. Norm? Yeah, no, look, it's, um, there is a, it is a massive, um, you know, uh, process and I think we're heading in the right direction but like you say I think um, you know it's it's we've just it's a matter of partnering up and, and finding finding solutions other than you know the the the, the problem that that is the violence as it is you know so yeah uh, yeah I mean I don't know why you feel it no, I think that the union also plays a massive role when it comes to educating um, making people and clubs aware of of situations and, 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 and basically educating the administrators that run the club because they play a massive role, you know. Um, their feelings and the, the way the club is run gets uh, filtered down through to the players and spectators and if they protrude a very disciplined, um, hard uh, line, maybe it will filter down to the spectators and the players and um, a hard line has to be taken by that administrators of that club to mm. keep rugby, you know, as... Um, as fun and, and, and as community-like and, and, and sociable for everyone to come down and enjoy a game of rugby yeah. and, and leave the, the sideshows at home. I mean, the one, the one thing that I can categorically state is that when, when our show, Cape Rugby, goes to a game, the administrators, the players, and the fans are all saying, behave yourself. Today we don't fight. <laughs> TV is here. There's like a big <laughs> impact when we get to a game. So maybe we can't be at 45 games, but at the games where we are, hmm. we change that moment in time. Stage? And that is why it will assist all the clubs if they all try and you know get themselves a little camera and you know sort of just go around the field yeah. with it. They can even look at it on the on a Monday and help their team, but. Once people see cameras you know, and things mm -hmm. like that, they sort of calm down and they know they can't just do what they want. You see, what, what I, I think the one other thing that maybe some people don't realize is that we get a lot of requests from clubs to say, come to our game. Um, and I'll make it categorically clear now that if I think you're a club that's not playing the game, that you're a club that's getting out of hand, that you're an administrator, that doesn't encourage good behavior, and maybe you've got a coach who rather wants to act like a scully. We will not come to your game. You will not be on this TV show. Your jersey will not be on the back there. Of course, it's difficult to identify those kind of clubs, but if that's the perception that we have. So even more reason why this show needs as much support as possible for as long as possible. Because even though maybe we can't be at 45 clubs, for that one day, that one afternoon, we are making a difference. And, and I think, therefore, um, your show and the work that you, Mr. H, 
and Morgz is doing should never be underestimated um, from a union's perspective and from club's perspective. Um, so keep on doing the, the great work that you're doing. Um, you're making a difference in, 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 in a lot of people's lives, in communities, yeah. in clubs, and I mean, which club could have thought is, would be on TV? And uh, yeah. so it's well amazing. I, I, I mean, I, d I don't want us to really, uh, oh, we've, uh, you know, yes, we've started it, and a lot of people are giving us credit for it, but I think, um, you know, we're actually almost just like the vehicle for people to be able to get involved. We're the vehicle, we're the middle man kind of thing, you know. We want to see everybody else come to the party and, and support the process. It's not, you know, it's not always about patting us on the back. Yes, we've got it started, but what we've done is now we've created a platform for sponsors to get involved, for people to take the opportunity to give their clubs exposure. So if you're a club administrator out there or a sponsor out there, take the opportunity. You are making a difference. So anyway, we're going to leave it at that. And please, the odd incident, don't taint all of mm. club rugby with the odd incident. Ish. Most definitely. I mean, you get these um, the offside shows, you know. I mean, some stuff you just really can't control. Yeah. Uh, as much as you have a, a very good administrative um, running the club, some, you know, spectators, you cannot really control all the emotions all the time. I mean, if you, you go to that website, for example, you know, you can have 45 games. And there will be one game that maybe was, was, mm. was a bit of an incident. Yeah, Nobody will say anything about the 44 <laughs> games that was fantastic. But there will be 45 pages of yeah. Oaks typing about the one <laughs> bad game. So they are, let's not paint what, what all the good stuff with that one isolated incident. Rather, we find those culprits and we eradicate them. All right, so Cape Rugby TV, firmly, we don't support uh, drugs in sport. And we don't support violence in sport. So guys keep it clear leisure hotels is one of our partners who keenly supports sport in the western cape we have seen them actively get involved and support through the western Province sports council the western cape uh, sports confederation leisure hotels giving great support uh, to to federations who use their facilities if you want to win for yourself a night's accommodation bed and breakfast this is the place to do it tonight uh, we announce once again last week's winner in the leisure hotels competition so uh, win there for Jamila Fabe. Congratulations, Jamila. You win for yourself a night's accommodation, bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers. All right, folks, it's time for us to take an ad break. And when we come back, we're back to Super 15. And it's your chance to get down to Newlands. And you can support the Stormers as they take on the Mighty Cheetahs. And uh, we'll do our Super Group predictions. And this uh, week, once again, we'll throw Ishwell Dolly into the picture. We'll be back with you in a sec. So yes, it is of course Super 15 time. <laughs> JT Nordia is falling asleep on the job yet. So the Stormers are back, the Springbok Test matches are finished. Okay, finally we get back down to Super 15 rugby. Let's take a quick look at the fixtures over the weekend. Yes, it is the Chiefs up against the Hurricanes on Friday. On Saturday, Highlands against the Crusaders. The Sharks take on the Blues, the Bulls and the Kings. And the Stormers take on the Cheetahs. Time for your Super Brew predictions then. Now that you see who's up against who, let's start off with the Chiefs and the Hurricanes, Morgs. Um, it's caught me a little bit off guard, but I'm going to go um, Chiefs for five, Jabs. Uh, yes? Chiefs by eight. Chiefs by eight? Chiefs 12. Chiefs by 12, yes. Um, I'm going to go with the Chiefs by 17. Sure. Uh, the Highlanders take on the Crusaders in Dunedin, Morgs. Um, I think the Crusaders will come back positive. I'm going to go Crusaders 12. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. Crusaders 3. Crusaders 15. Crusaders by 15. Um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's a, uh, playing at that Eden, eh? The House of Pain. Uh, or is it still the House of Pain? I'm going to go. I, in fact, yeah, I, I'm, this is a tough one. Okay, I'm, I'll go with the Crusaders by 7. The Sharks take on the Blues in Durban. Oh, folks. Um, Sharks have got a lot of injuries, but I'm going to go Sharks 3. Yes? Sharks 5. Sharks 7. I'm going to go with the Blues by 7 on that one. Um, injuries or no injuries, they <laughs> don't, I don't think they've got the mental game for it now. The Bulls take on the Kings in Pretoria, Morgs. <coughs> King. Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> Bulls. 30. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Bulls uh, 12. Uh, Bulls by 12. Um, Bulls 15. Yeah. Is the age game with the Bulls by 15? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Bulls by, uh, you know, Pierce Piss is out. He's torn a bicep now for the rest of the season. I'm going to go for the Bulls by 21. The Stormers take on the Cheetahs at Newlands. Uh, Morgs. Stormers, 2. 
Storm is two, okay. Storm is seven. Storm is my seven, the face. I would say Storm is nine. Storm is my nine up against the cheaters. I'm gonna go with the Storm is by five. So hopefully it'll be a good result for the Stormers. So remember you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. You will find the ball on uh, the uh, Facebook page in a couple of minutes after our show. Go and check it out. Don't forget, of course, our YouTube uploads are also up uh, uh, on, um, on, on Facebook and on YouTube on Thursday mornings. Morgs, have yourself a great rugby weekend. Thanks, James. You too. Ish, thanks for joining us. And of course, we'll see you again soon. Thanks, Trevi. And good luck with the um, amateur time. Thank you very much. I'm sure we're going to win. Hopefully. Hopefully. Mr. H? See you at City Park. City Park Temperance up against uh, Perseverance. Perseverance is going to be a monster match. There we go. All right. Okay, so we did say we would take a look at the coaches and see who the coach, top coaches are, but let's switch it around because it's the same thing. It's the top 10 teams. And remember, this is strike rate. Played versus win. It changes every week. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is the best coach on the planet. All right, what it means is the best coach in their environment doing what they can to win the games in their spaces. It goes on strike rate. All right, it's as simple as that. So this week, let's take a look there. Solarians are on top. Masi Pumlele, 100% strike rate. Lamotte, 100% strike rate. Kai Licha, 100% strike rate. They've played 8 out of 8. Mulleton, as we smell Dolly, at, of course, uh, 11 out of 10 strike rate. That's 91%. Primrose, um, 10 out of 9, 90%. Collegians, uh, 9 out of 10, 90%. Young Peoples, 90%. Lower Paul, 90%. Marty's are now dropping down, as you can see, it's 89%. They haven't played as many games. Right, folks, those are, of course, your top 10 teams at the moment. And next week, once again, we'll add the coaches back in and see who the top uh, 10 coaches are. It will change every week, and it goes on strike rate. Okay, have yourself a fantastic uh, rugby weekend. Bye-bye.